In today's video, I'm going to be discussing work and income opportunities as a blind or visually impaired person. Stick with me, it's definitely a loaded video, so let's go get into it. Hey everyone, this is Matt. Welcome back to another Blind to Billionaire video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing some work and income opportunities as a blind or visually impaired person. But hey, before we get into it, I have a quick announcement. A few weeks ago, I announced the winner of the handheld magnifier and too bad for that person's luck, Jane E. Sorry, but your time has expired. She did not claim the prize, so be sure you stick around to the end of this video and I will be announcing the secondary winner that we chose that day. So, sorry Jane. Anyway, let's get into the video. So what are some income opportunities or work opportunities if you are someone who is blind or visually impaired? So I know this is a huge topic because there's a lot of people out there that say, you know, I have really limited vision. I have no vision. What can I do? I mean, it's it's a question that all of us have. I've produced a video like this, I don't know when, I'm just gonna say maybe like a year ago, maybe like a year and a half ago, I produced a video like this and it still produces a lot of comments. And um, so yeah, I just, I wanted to give you an updated version of this video with some new ideas and concepts. So how would I approach this question of what can I do for work um, or for income as a blind or visually impaired person? So rather than asking or saying the questions or the statements of what can I do or I don't know what I can do or what can I do, um, my question would be, I would, I would change it around and ask myself the question, what can I do or what am I good at? Now, whether you're blind or visually impaired, it doesn't really matter. I guarantee you every single person watching this video is good at something. Like you're very good at something. I don't know what that is. It's going to be different for all of us but I guarantee you, you're very knowledgeable, you're passionate, and you're good at something. It doesn't really matter. So what my question or my statement to you would be, explore those options. Maybe if it would help you, sit down with maybe like a pen and paper if you are still able to see with some residual vision or figure out some way that you can take some notes. Maybe it's in your phone or you know whatever works for you. And ask yourself that question, what can I do? And what am I good at? Like, what am I passionate about? And I'll get into more of that here in just a little while, but just right off the top of your head, just start writing right away. Don't sit and think about it. Just the first ideas that come to mind, write it down. It doesn't matter what it is, just write it down. And then you can revisit this and explore a little bit deeper. But when you make this list, whatever comes to mind initially right away are, you know, whatever you're good at. I mean, those are like the top ideas in your mind. Now, if you dig a little bit deeper on each of those ideas, you can really explore and think, now, how can I monetize this idea? So um, I've actually had, you know, this question, I asked myself this a while ago, and I used to phrase this whole concept of income and work as a blind person with coming from the state of mind of, well, I don't know what I can do because I can't see anything, right? Well, if you just change the wording a little bit, you definitely get a completely different mindset and a lot more ideas. My second thing would be, be creative. How can you monetize these different ideas? Let me give you a couple examples of people that I know that could definitely monetize what they're currently doing, but I don't know if they are monetizing, but they certainly could be. And it's some of you right here on this channel. So I have a couple examples of people here and who knows, maybe I'll give you guys a million dollar idea. If so, you know, I, I'll accept a little commission. Um, but anyway, what about, so I'm going to say like, um, Blind Grillin, Chris from Blind Grillin. He has the channel. So he has a channel. He loves to grill. You can obviously see in his videos, he's very knowledgeable about grilling. He has a lot of really good tips and tricks. So I don't know if Chris is monetizing anything that he's doing, but to, let's just say he's not. One idea for him would be, well, how can he monetize? Let's be creative. Well, maybe he could host some type of like grilling events. Maybe he could, in his local area, he could advertise and say, hey, I'll come over and grill for maybe like a grad party, a retirement party, maybe like a holiday party for some company. Maybe he uh, mixes up some of his own rubs for maybe some steak or chicken or fish rubs, stuff like that, and he starts selling them online. Or 
Uh, maybe he brands some of his own products, like a talking thermometer. Maybe he throws the blind gorilla name on there and starts selling those off of his channel. So, I mean, those are just a couple ideas. There's so many more, but again, be creative. Another person I can think of, Amanda Ulrich from uh, my, sorry, Amanda, what is it? My Blind and Chronic Illness Life. So the deal with her, a couple weeks ago, she sent us an amazing beach painting. Now, I can't see what it is because my vision doesn't allow me to see it, but everybody that has seen that picture, whether it's online or in person, they've said like, wow, I mean, that's amazing. Like she did excellent work. And what made me think is like, Amanda, clearly she's very talented with what she does with her painting. Now, who says she couldn't just paint a few more pictures of, you know, whatever, maybe their beachscapes or um, whatever else she wants and starts sell selling those. Maybe she creates just a really simple website or she starts advertising on her YouTube channel and says, hey, you know, I created this piece and she shows it and then say, hey, it's for sale for, you know, X dollars, $195. There you go, Amanda, 195 bucks. I don't know, I guarantee you could find somebody to pay it. Um, what's actually kind of funny is the painting that she sent us a few weeks ago, there were actually a few people who commented like, hey, I would buy that. Corey even commented when she unwrapped it, she'd be like, if I saw this on vacation, I would buy it, definitely. So, you know, another just idea, just be creative. So clearly these two people that I just talked about, Chris and Amanda, they're both very talented in their respective fields, right? So who's another person? Another person that comes to mind is um, Ryan from The Amazing Blind Magician. So Ryan, he he's also blind and he does magic. So I know he does a lot of like charity or like fundraising events where he comes in and does some magic. But who says Ryan couldn't do, you know, he can certainly do that. He could host events and charge, you know, five, 10 bucks admission or even more, you know, more than that, 15, 20 bucks. It doesn't matter, I don't know. He can price whatever he wants and then do some magic shows. But I'm sure he's already thought of that. But Let's think of it again. He could offer his services for maybe like, again, like I was saying with Chris, maybe like grad parties or retirement parties or holiday parties, or um, he could come in for like kids' birthday parties, or maybe he could even do something like um, a different aspect would be teaching other people who are aspiring uh, magicians. He could come in and say, here's how you do it and help and he kind of be like a mentor to all these other people who are interested in magic. So that's just another way that Ryan could monetize what he's already doing and what he loves. So let's think of somebody else. Um, there's a couple people that I can think of who are bilingual on this channel. Marwan, hey Marwan, he's an awesome friend here. And Raphael, both of these guys um, are bilingual. I'm sure there's a lot of other, you, of other people here on the channel who are as well, but those are just the first two that came to mind. Um, so Marwan, I think he is fluent in Arabic and as well as English and Raphael, English and Spanish. So these guys, I mean, clearly they have, um, they have knowledge that could be beneficial in so many ways. And the cool thing about what they do is they actually wouldn't need to leave their house to do it. There's actually different websites or apps where these guys could go on there and actually do some translating, um, like over the phone or by computer or whatever. Um, in their different languages and help out that way. So that's just another way that these guys would have income opportunities and they could maybe um, just bring in some extra income or salary on the side. So uh, I feel like these are some great ideas. And like I've been saying, just be creative. Keep asking yourself, what can I do? What am I good at? What am I passionate about? You're probably already doing something that could potentially bring in income. You just need to figure out like, how can I monetize this? And you might even think like, oh, you know, nobody wants this. Nobody wants this service. Nobody wants this product. I would totally disagree. My belief is there is a buyer for everything. It doesn't matter what you have, there is a buyer. You just need to find the buyer. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, but there is a buyer and you just need to find the right price point. My theory is always start high, you can always go low, right? If you're low and somebody comes in and you're really low, well, you can't really jack the price once somebody's there. But if you start high, you can work your way lower and you can always have some room for negotiation too. Um, now, you're probably wondering, like, what do I do for income? What do I do for um, like a job, um, my income, whatever? So I'll be completely transparent with you. I do not work a tr traditional job. I haven't in 11 years. 
the last time I actually had a job was 11 years ago. I think that's right. Yeah, 11 years ago or something like that. But since then, I've been, I'm one of these people that I'm always like hustling around. If anybody, if you ever ask anybody that knows me, they're like, Matt's crazy because I am. I look for opportunity in everything. I'm always being creative. I look at everything as an opportunity. How can I monetize this? I don't care what it is. I look at it from the aspect of how can I turn that into cash, right? And that's just how I'm programmed. I've been that way since I was a little kid and I, I'd be willing to bet I'm gonna be that way my whole life because that's just how I think. And so anyway, getting into it, what do I do for income and to help contribute? Um, so what do I do? Well, I actually wear many different hats. Um, so Corey and I, we actually own a few rental properties, which I love. I love finance, I love real estate, and it's just something we did. We bought a few rental properties, we have them rented out, we have incredible tenants, we love the people that live in our properties, and every month we get checks in our mailbox, and it's just awesome. And those tenants will contact me every so often and say, hey, you know, my fridge is making some noise, will you come and check it out? Or hey, the toilet keeps running, will you come and fix it for me? And of course, it's my duty to go over there and fix it promptly. That's my commitment to them, and that's what I do. So that's one thing that I do. What else do I do? Um, a few years ago, I just stumbled onto this, and again, using my creative mindset, I turned it into a pretty, um, like, a, a little business venture that has actually kept me very busy. So a few years ago, I had an aunt and uncle who moved back to Minnesota here after living out of the state for a few years. They bought a house. And it had some you know, old kind of gross carpet in it and they wanted it ripped out because they were gonna replace it. And so they went to Home Depot, they got a bid for the new carpet and the tear out. And then they came, well, we were just talking about it and they said like, you know, it's X dollars to get this carpet torn out. And I said, hey, I'll do it for 75% of that. And they're like, heck yeah, you know, save us a couple hundred bucks, we'll do it. So I went in and I just tore all this carpet in their house, you know, cut it into sections, rolled it up, carried it out to the truck and took it away and took it to a recycling place. And then I thought, you know, that wasn't so bad. I could do it without vision. I could just crawl around or walk around, um, cut the carpet, roll it up and then just carry it out. So I started advertising. I thought, you know, there's probably demand for this. Let's just see. You never know until you try. Remember that too, you never know until you try. Going back to my concept of be creative and there's a buyer for everything, okay? So keep that in mind. So I started advertising on Craigslist because why not? It's just a free, free marketplace where you can reach a lot of people. I advertised on, market, on, uh, on Craigslist and before long, it wasn't very long at all, I had a, uh, someone text me and said, hey, I have some carpet in my basement I need torn out, you wanna do it? And it happened to be like two miles from my parents' house and I thought, sure, I'll do that. So we went over there, my dad and I, one evening, and the lady came in and she said, this is what I need taken care of. So we went down, tore it out, and she paid us, and I was like, sweet, that was awesome. So then we kept, I, you know, I advertised some more, and then I kept getting calls and calls and, and more calls. Well, fast forward like three years later, which is right now, and literally I get calls or text messages almost daily for some type of work. So we've actually expanded our work for not only carpet, but other flooring, tile, uh, pergol, plank. Um, we do a lot of that, a lot of carpet. We also expanded our services to demolition services. So now in the last 12 months or so, we've actually hooked up with quite a few different contractors and we've been doing some massive projects for them. Um, so we've been like super busy lately. My dad's actually out of town right now. He's the guy that does it with me, my dad and I. But um, like speaking of this, tomorrow my mom is actually helping me. We're going to tear out uh, 2,200 square feet of carpet in a house tomorrow. So I mean, that's just one job. We did another job yesterday. And my dad and I, we do a lot of demo work. I mean, we've done a ton of bathroom demo, kitchen demo, basically you name it, we've done it. And it's just, it's really interesting to see the progression of just a simple idea three years ago of trying to make a few hundred bucks from my aunt and uncle who were going to pay Home Depot. And I said, hey, I'll do it. And they hired me to do it. Turned into a creative idea where my dad and I are keeping really busy doing this demolition and flooring removal stuff. Now, look, don't get me wrong. This is not something that I wanna do the rest of my life forever. Certainly not. I've actually thought about, eh, I don't really wanna do this anymore simply because it's, it's kinda hard on my body, like my knees hurt. Um, 
But I thought for now, it's like, it's certainly keeping us very busy. My dad's retired. He retired, um, I think four years ago, five years ago, he retired. And it's a nice way for me to give my dad something to do as well. It's, it's a fun way for the two of us to go out, spend three, four, five hours in a single day and make some pretty good money at the, in the process. So again, I, I know I've said this like 10 times now, but be creative with what you can do. Ask yourself, what can I do and what am I good at? Um, like I said before, I guarantee you, you're already good at something. You have knowledge in something. Like the examples that I gave earlier about Chris or Amanda or Ryan or Marwan and, and Raphael being interpreters. I mean, this is just a couple examples of skills and knowledge that these people already have that they could be getting paid for. Um, you just need to be a, a little bit creative and figure out like, how can I monetize this? Continue working on it, continue to conceive of ideas until you find something that sticks and then just keep going with it. Um, so what else do we do? Corey and I, well, I can't really take a, uh, credit for this, but Corey and her sister have a little online business. Both of them are very good and talented with sewing and they make little handheld items and they sell them on Etsy. And they sell quite a few of these things. Um, actually, like September, October is their busy months and it's pretty exciting. I mean, like October, you know, they sell quite a few of these things. So it's, it's more of a seasonal product, but at the same time, it's just one more way that they're creative, taking their talents and what they're good at, applying it, and then finding a buyer. So anyway, these are a few ideas that I wanted to mention in this video about um, income and work uh, opportunities as a person who is blind or visually impaired. So um, I know this is kind of a long-winded video, but I just feel like there's so many different options and opportunities out there. You just really need to think about, just change the, the question. Rather than saying, I, I've said this a few times now, rather than saying, um, what can I do? Or not what can I do, but like, um, I don't know what I can do. You know, I can't really see, um, I don't know what I can do. You know, change the, tra change the question. What can I do? What am I good at? And then just write down a list of everything you're good at and just start thinking, how can I monetize this? Um, and just go from there. Anyway, if you have any questions about any of this, I love talking about it. You can probably hear a little bit of the excitement and passion that I have for this. I just, I really love talking about this stuff. It's really interesting to me. I love being creative and just thinking of different ways that how can I, how can I monetize this? Like, how can I turn this into an opportunity? Um, so that's just what I do. I mean, it's something I've always been kind of really good at, I would say. People, <laughs> this is kind of funny, I probably shouldn't say this, but there's a lot of people who have said to me over the course of my entire life, oh, that match, everything he touches turns to gold. And it really is because I look at it from a different mindset. Now, one other thing I wanted to throw out, these jobs that we do, like these demo jobs, for example, um, different flooring or things that we demo, for example, if it's in good condition, I'll bring it home, throw it online and sell it again. I got paid to take it out and then I'm getting paid again to sell it. So again, a lot of people would just throw this stuff away. I sell it. Why not? Why, why wouldn't I sell it? For example, in the garage right now, we have a bunch of solid pine doors. I have a guy coming in a couple days to buy them from me. We were just going to throw them away, but I thought, no, I see an opportunity. Somebody wants these. There is a buyer. I guarantee it because they're in good condition. Why not sell them? So just another cool idea. Anyway, let's get into the secondary winner of the handheld magnifier. So, hey, like I said earlier in this video, Jane E, sorry for your luck, but you are out of time. Uh, I gave you a couple of weeks and she did not claim the prize. So luckily I drew a secondary winner and I'll be announcing that in just a second. But hey, the secondary winner, send me an email, blindtobillionaire at gmail.com and claim your prize. I'm going to give you until end of day, October 15th to claim the prize. If you do not claim it, I will be forced <laughs> to choose another winner. I'm going to continue choosing winners until somebody claims the prize. And here's the deal. I have another item that I'm ready to give away. It's an Amazon Fire 7 tablet. I announced it um, actually the same day that I announced the winner of the handheld magnifier. Um, but I can't give that away until I give this device away. I don't have it with me. Otherwise, I'd hold it up and show you right what it is right now. But anyway, the video was a few weeks ago. 
It's just a handheld magnifier. But anyway, the secondary winner of that item is Janelle Meager. So hey, Janelle, send me an email if you want it. If not, I'm going to give it to somebody else. <laughs> so anyway, um, I suppose I should get into today's shout out. Um, man, I feel like, all right, today's shout out is going to go to Blind Grillin. Chris, congratulations. Um, the reason I chose Chris is because I actually want to give a little um, a little teaser. Chris and I are going to be doing a pretty cool collaboration here in just a couple weeks. Um, I'm not going to give any more details, but you may be able to figure out what it's about. But anyway, I'm excited for that. Stay tuned. It's going to be in probably a couple weeks from now, but we're working on the details. And congratulations, Chris, to the shout out, uh, Blind Grillin. And Janelle Meager, congratulations for the winning of the handheld magnifier. Be sure to send me an email if you want it. Otherwise, I hope I gave you some inspiration and some ideas for other income or work opportunities as a blind or visually impaired person. Also, if you have an idea of some kind and you need some kind of you need some help refining it or figuring out like, hey, how can I turn this idea into cash? Ah, it's something I'm good at. I just love saying that. Um, if you need help with something like that, feel free. Leave a comment down below and let's brainstorm together. I love it. I would love to be able to help you figure out how you can monetize something. And um, yeah, if you have any other comments or questions, feel free to stick those down below and uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. I really enjoyed making this video. Thanks again, everybody. I'll see you on Monday, maybe a bonus video on Saturday. Thanks again. You can't wait to see me now Cause lately you've been feeling down